So now I'm going to show you here, uh, this is open bin quantities. This is a program that you can do two things. You can either extract quantities from a BIM model, so you can extract quantities from a Revit model. So imagine you have a Revit model that they share into a BIM server center. Now I'm able to pick up this Revit model and I'm able to extract quantities or not just Revit, pretty much any model. So I'm going to go ahead and just show you this example that I showed you previously already of the building. Uh, but now keep in mind that we can also extract quantities here from uh, 2D drawings as well. Okay, not just from, from this. So it's a program that is quite simple and it just needs three things. Okay, one is going to be the model or the model, which is a 2D drawing, uh, sorry, the 3D model that you see here. Okay, then it's going to need a cost database and then it's gonna need a set of measurement rules, okay? As I said, this doesn't apply set of measurement rules like uh, the ones use, being used right now in other software like Glodem because the BIM model automatically recognizes each element different when it comes to measurements. So you can see here, for example, this model that I've imported has all of my IFC beams, okay? And these beams are being automatically recognized here by the program and I'm able to view all the beams or I'm able to just take a look at the quantity of one particular beam. As you see here on the top left where it shows entities, it shows that I have in total 80 beams and I can go one by one and check each beam, but I can also interact with this model and I can check the beam directly from here. Now, uh, when it comes to quantities, you'll see that below here, well, we obviously have IFC beam, we have IFC column, we have 140 columns, we have doors, and you see beneath this, there's a part that says properties, okay? Now in the properties, I am able to recognize this as units, as measurements. There's a lot of different ways that I can uh, get this measurement. Now, in particular, in this one, you'll see in the quantities, I have a, a gross section area, I have a gross surface area, gross volume, I have length, net surface, net volume, and outer surface area. There's a lot of different options that I can do, but I can also, for example, in doors, I can have only a area height parameter width, a, but also, for example, I could have certain areas that could be furniture, that it's a one one piece or et cetera, okay? So that's that's what it is. And now this model, I've imported it automatically and all the, when it comes to the measurements, they have been extracted automatically. Now, what I have to do is I have to link this with a cost database, okay? Or, and I have to create some set of measurement rules. Now, when it comes to cost database, we have here a certain cost databases that are already preloaded you can easily copy and paste the cost database uh, that you have here and start working on a new one. Or you're also able to import a, a CSV file or an Excel spreadsheet if you already have a cost database that you've created. The program even tells you how you have to import it. And, you know, we have pretty much the character maps of how you have to, I think you have to use Unicode. We have certain steps depending on what it is for you to import that file so that you can automatically import an entire cost database if you have it available in Excel, okay? Another possibility, you see that you have here a link to the N3C database. If you are a member and you have access to this database, you can also import it as well, okay? And now uh, our cost database pretty much here, uh, you can see when it comes to, for example, foundations, we take a look at here the foundation and you will see that uh, it has different foundation elements. For example, it has beams and it ties, and then it has a, a different breakdown for each of them. The possibility of the breakdown, it's pretty much up to you. Like for example, this is one square meter of a, this particular installation of foundation formwork is consistent of a piece of wood, the pine wood, the galvanized steel tie, a, materials, all the materials that it includes, and then all the labors and also indirect costs. Our program can also take into account, if you see here in these particular bonds, we could take into account concepts such as, such as waste generated, okay? And you see here in the bottom, for example, for this item, we have a description of the item. We can have gra graphical information. 
We can have specifications, also technical information, which is right now each time being more and more important, like the physical properties, environmental data, and also the waste, and also the waste generated. As you can see in this item, which is just the form work, I'm generating this waste from on-site laying and this waste from packing, and I can have the program take all this into consideration. It's quite simple for you to enter information and create a cost database. And once you have it, you can just always keep expanding it more and more. It's, it's quite simple. Now, the cost database is one thing that you need to do, but then the second step that you need to do, you need to give it a set of measurement rules. Now, the set of measurement rules are not as detailed as in the programs that you're working off a 2D drawing, because you have to know exactly up to what point you're measuring in each of these sections. But now when you're working in BIM, all of the BIM elements are considered separately. So all that you have to do here is the type of set of measurement rules you need to do is tell the program what you want it to include and how you want it to measure each section. Okay. For example, if you look again at the area of the foundations, under foundations, you have ties, you have foundation elements, you have slabs, etc. And now here on the right, you can have a rule of measurement for each of these areas, and you could tell the program what you want it to include in these rules of measurement. Okay, it's quite simple. And once that it's set up once, it's quite easy to reuse. Now, once you have the 2D, sorry, the 3D model or the digital model, the cost database and the set of measurement rules, now we're able to generate a BOQ. And I'm also going to show you here in this next tab how you will work with this program if you don't have a digital model. Now, the most interesting way to work with this software is obviously with a digital model uh, because it extracts the quantities automatically. But if not, it's also possible. Now, when you create your, uh, your uh, BOQ, it gives you here the possibility to enter different general parameters. And you're also able to take into consideration if you want to change the to Malaysian uh, ringgit or whatever uh, uh, currency you need. Uh, you could put the currency symbol on the right left. You're able to adapt the decimals to your liking. You're able to add the percentages as well to your liking. You can add all sorts of taxes, okay? Contingencies, general expenses. There's a lot of possibilities. Now we press accept. We have all this generated. Now you'll see that in the bill of quantities here, again, in the same part, for example, if you look at the part of the foundation elements, you'll see that everything is uh, broken down into different sections and you're able to see, for example, superficial foundation, or you could see strap being separate. And now you could see exact quantities as well here, okay? Now, the program also has a little chart for you to take a look at the breakdown. Like for example, of this item, the installation of the foundation form work, which we looked at previously. Here we could see again, the breakdown. We could see the waste factors being generated by this. And we can also see certifications. The same way we have a way of graphically seeing everything that's happening here. For example, if I need to look at the CO2 emissions in this area, we could see what's being generated by each of the materials or we could just see a general BOQ, what's, you know, this could give you a, a really good understanding of what's going on in the project. And then it, it's just as simple as coming in here and generating the BOQ. And then this information also, you're able to actually copy and paste this and send it uh, to Excel, this that I'm generating as well. So you see here the BOQ, has been automatically done, okay, for us. And for example, if we look at the part of, a, for example, the concrete, we have different types of BOQs that we could generate. We could do a, just the quantities. We could do a cost breakdown. We could do price bill of quantities. We can even customize it. Let's see the detailed bill of quantities is normally the one that's the most complete. It's generated like 37 pages already. Uh, and you'll see that this, for example, uh, if you look at any of the parts, okay, I'll have a breakdown, I'll have a quantity, I'll have a rate, I'll have a total amount, and then I'll have a breakdown of all of the different uh, quantities here as well, okay? And we are always able to export this information in PDF, DOCX, or text files, etc. We also can get here this entire section and we can uh, copy, okay? Or we can also export 
And uh, my colleague actually, Bakir, explained to us of this. We're able to organize uh, the, the rows, et cetera, to however we like, okay? Or we could just completely copy this entire table into Excel as well, okay? And tweak it in other ways also if needed. We would also be able to at any point share this information uh, in BIM Server Center, okay? And in BIM Server Center, we would also be able to share this information back over to uh, back to to Revit as well, okay? So it'll be a matter of just here, we can go and we can paste it, okay? Here we go, okay? On Excel as well. Now here, this program also, if you need to measure off 2D, it is possible. Here, there's always a, this is always a 3D model, what you're looking at here, okay? Here in my, we're always generating here a 3D model, but I'm able to measure any area here, okay? I could just go ahead and, for example, tell the program, all right, I need to check this particular measurement of this part of the building. So I would be able to pick, for example, a, a floor. I'd be able to split this. Let me go ahead and actually get a different angle, my bad here. Okay, this one, here we go, okay. And now at this moment, I would be able to come in here, okay. And I would be able to manually measure something here, okay, if needed. So I would be able to come here, for example, turn on my snap options as well. Okay, well, you see this area is giving me a 7.3. And now I'd be able to take this into consideration in another measurement, okay, in here. If I'm measuring in certain areas, let's say that this is the, the solid slab, well, I'd be able to enter that information and have it recognize measurement. But that in itself is another, another presentation, okay? But I can also ma manually measure CAD drawings. I can import drawings here as well for us to measure. There's there's a lot of different options, okay? And always in our software, you will see that we have a user's manual as well, okay? And now uh, if I would so choose, I would just have to share this information in BIM Server Center. And then I would have obviously the BOQ available for me to view in my projects here as well. And it's pretty much always gonna be the same workflow. Uh, we design in our software, uh, or we analyze in our software and then that information is sent uh, to the cloud or not because remember that all of the all of the private information stays in your particular computer okay but this allows us to at uh, this this moment share the information uh, in the cloud and then this gives us the ability to visualize the information or to just send the information to Revit uh, via the plugin that we have okay